Welcome back. Famine and violence are sweeping through the country of Haiti. The U.S. government has warned U.S. citizens there to leave the Caribbean nation. So far, there's not been a mass exodus of Haitians to Florida, but Governor Ron DeSantis says if Haitians arrive in Florida, he might transfer them to Martha's Vineyard, which is what he did when his administration found about 50 undocumented immigrants in Texas two years ago and paid to fly them to Massachusetts. That was expensive. It cost Florida taxpayers $35,000 per immigrant. Now the governor has launched what he calls Operation Vigilant Sentry, which is designed to keep Haitian refugees from making landfall and finding a haven here in the Sunshine State. He's deployed 250 state officers, mostly members of the Florida State Guard, to try to block Haitian refugees from coming here. And joining us now to discuss the situation is Shailen Fluharty, an immigration attorney and advocate. And Shailen, welcome back to Florida this week. Good to see you. Thank you. It's, it's great to be here. All right. So the, the governor says uh, he might send some of these Haitians if they come. They haven't come yet in big numbers. Uh, he might send them to Martha's Vineyard. He's also sent about 250 state officers down to southeast Florida to try to push the uh, Haitians back uh, to their home country. What do you make of that policy? I think a lot of this dialogue is really political posturing. Um, it's really disconnected from the operational response that's both federal and state in collaboration that exists through something called Operation Vigilant Ant Century, which is a, a interagency task force that for a long time um, has created procedures for dealing with maritime mass migration. What, what's important for people to know is that the way that the US Coast Guard uh, patrols international waters allows them to interdict individuals typically who are traveling by sea in the territorial waters of other countries. This means that the Coast Guard might be picking up individuals who are traveling by sea right close to Haiti or right close to the Bahamas. And truly, it's it's this interdiction that's very far from Florida land that prevents people much sooner than their arrival to Florida from ever making it here. So as we think about whether or not we'll see individuals from Haiti who are kind of arriving in the masses to Florida, it's so incredibly unlikely based upon decades of operational realities at sea that make it more likely that individuals would be dropped off in the Bahamas or dropped off directly in Haiti, which, as you know, is an incredible problem. So it, what the governor is doing is really not going to make an impact if Haitians decide to come here. Right. I mean, what, what we know is that U.S. Coast Guard officials actually interdict individuals at sea and that under Operation Vigilant Sentry in circumstances like this, the plan for a very long time has been to, to place individuals who have protection claims and need immediate protection in Guantanamo Bay. And that's um, actually a very uh, concerning reality because in a place like Guantanamo Bay, the conditions are so deplorable. You know, people are left there without access to counsel. They're left without really just basic necessities that are needed to provide a, a real humanitarian response in the face of what's happening in Haiti. So the governor says that if some Haitians come here, he may uh, send them up to Martha's Vineyard. Uh, I know that we have hundreds of thousands of Haitians already living here in Florida. What do you make of the governor's statement that he's going to send, if, if we get new arrivals, he's going to send them up to Massachusetts? Well, it's, it's actually another kind of interesting statement from the governor's office because we know that that particular action by the state of Florida transporting migrants to Martha's Vineyard, that one flight, led to significant litigation, including litigation that, you know, really has led the, the state to stop taking that course. You know, that was expensive misuse of taxpayer funding and dollars. You know, we have lots of challenges and needs here in Florida. Floridians deserve the state's full attention and support. And so, you know, this kind of rhetoric is both disconnected from the reality, but also um, certainly forgetful of litigation history that has really kind of asked the governor to reconsider those actions and in, in, indeed prevented him from, from flying more individuals to places like Martha's Vineyard. So what do you think the U.S. policy should be? Well, rather, what should the Florida policy be towards the possible arrival of Haitian refugees? Right, so, you know, there are three specific things that our federal government should do. First, all forced returns to Haiti must stop. Both removal flights from the United States and repatriations to Haiti 
through subsequent to maritime migration, we know that the, there is no Haitian government in this moment to receive people. And we know also it's a humanitarian crisis. Um, Haiti needs access to things like their airport and their port to facilitate you know, arrival of medical aid, of food, of other things. And repatriations to Haiti not only places people in danger, but really um, forgets the real realities of Haiti to ensure that we're supporting Haiti in this time of crisis. In addition, the federal government should stop all plans to detain Haitians at Guantanamo Bay and vulnerable populations in particular. Children, for example, families with young children should not be placed in a, in a location like Guantanamo Bay. We should think about where we can place individuals and vulnerable populations in particular, where they'll have access to the care that they desperately need. And in addition, the government should prioritize at all levels safety and family reunification for Haitians here in the United States. And there's real easy ways that the government can do this. It can expedite and expand parole processing for Haitians um, to ensure that you know, we're lifting the cap of Haitians that can come to the United States quickly rather than taking dangerous journeys by sea or by land. Um, and we can extend and redesignate temporary protected status for Haitians. This helps individuals who are in real danger. It promotes family unity, but also it's in some ways a meaningful cure to what's happening in Haiti. We know that when Haitians are in our community and they have access to something like a work permit, they're sending remittances back to Haiti that are helping people in Haiti by you know, the things that they desperately need in this time of curfew and violence um, that's really uncontrollable. So those would be the recommendations and they're certainly within the power of our federal government. Well, let's hope the uh, situation in Haiti gets better. So far, the uh, refugees haven't arrived in big numbers. Uh, Shailen Fluherty, thank you for joining us on Florida this week. Yes, of course, thank you.